Hi guys, I'm Nazar from the upcoming Lovely Hello. to Meet. Congratulations on the Doll Factory, absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so perhaps you could start by telling us, obviously it's a beautiful adaptation of, of the same name book by uh, Elizabeth McNeil. What can you expect when they watch the Doll Factory? I think they can expect the unexpected. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. It is, it's a very surprising show. It's a very unique, very singular, six episodes, tell a full story, I believe. Um, and I think it's a bit different in the TV landscape at the moment. There's nothing quite like it. It really does fill a niche that I didn't even know needed filled, <laughs> needed filling. It has all the hallmarks of a kind of Dickensian traditional Victoriana period drama, but it's much more dark. Rhymed, by the way. Thank you. Well it's much more uh, dark and twisted and it's got a kind of, uh, it's definitely viewed through a modern lens, I would say. Okay, and George, for you, can you tell us a little bit about your character, Louis? Because what kind of drew you to the role? Are you know, you're part of this pre-Raphaelite brotherhood, which is actually a real association of mm. artists. What was it like to kind of embody that sort of person? So interesting, so creative and visionary. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was it was really insightful. Like, I write on the side. I, I write every day. I try to write every day uh, and get incredibly frustrated with it and get real pain with writer's block and seeing Louis struggle with artist block, I don't know what the painter would call it, paint block, um, and understanding that that translates as the exact same problem and that any artist, whether it's music or paint or, I don't know, claymation, why does that come to my head? Not sure. If it's an art, um, it all struggles with the same thing. So that was that was definitely a way in into the character that, that helped me uh, synergize with him a bit. And yeah, he just kind of leapt off the page. He absolutely synced up with my initial instincts, you have an instinct when you read the brief of a character and like they write your little bio and go, okay, that makes sense. I really like that. And then you read the sides and they're, oh, this is good. And then the script, and you go, oh my God, this is, this is everything that I want it to be and more. Uh, and it, yeah, it was, it was great fun. Loved, loved, loved Louis. <laughs> I think the show explores creativity in a very interesting way and that yeah. we, and all the people making it were creatives and to watch these people be so obsessed with their creativity and to sort of dive headfirst into Definitely. that. It did feel a little bit like, oh, are we, we are we, them. are we like, <laughs> it is. them, like, we're yeah. all like screaming and shouting because something's not going right on set and getting, going home and being really frustrated with stuff. You're like, that's, we're quite close to tipping over the edge and being like these obsessive kind of creative very true, types. And it, it, it explores that feeling and that kind of helplessness in a kind of, in a way I'd not seen on screen before. And can you tell us a bit about your character, Gideon? Because, I mean, you've got quite a gory role in this as well. And you yeah. pair up with the obsessive taxidermist, you know, called Silas Reed, played mm -hmm. by Yana Hardwick. What was that like building that relationship and, and stepping into your character? I mean, Aina is a gift to work with. You, He's you an angel. Work with this work. He's such a sort of um, open and generous actor. Uh, so he'd been filming, you guys had actually been filming for a couple of weeks when I joined, and it was just kind of open arms, let's go for it, let's sort of bounce ideas backwards and forwards. Um, Gideon is very much a product of his time. He is someone who believes that the class you're born into is the class you deserve to be in, and there's no movement either in either direction. And so when he first meets Silas, he thinks that they're sort of on an equal footing, that he's a gentleman as well, and he's a fantastic surgeon. He's someone who I need to sort of take under my wing and work with. And then when he realises that he's not all he seems, um, Gideon reveals his true colours. And obviously for you working closely with Iris in this, can you talk about that relationship? Because she, you know, she wants to strike out, she wants to be free, which is quite unusual in Victorian times. And what was that like kind of building that relationship with her on screen? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, Esme Creed Miles, who plays her, is astonishing. Um, she's my girlfriend now, so I have to say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, she is. She's remarkable. And I think we had immediate chemistry as individuals that I hope translates onto screen. And our relationship evolved in much the same way that Louis and Iris's did. Like the first day we met in real life was the first day that we did the first scene where Louis and Iris meet. And so there's that kind of, when you don't know an actor so well, and there's a little bit of like, how are we, which I think is yeah, really yeah. nice to, to play with. And Louis and Iris's um, relationship evolved throughout throughout the throughout the show much like ours did in in real life which was which was brilliant she taught me a lot 
And obviously, you are set in Victorian London, and there's kind of got this angle of kind of gothic horror, these morbid undertones. Mm. What was that like stepping into that and kind of having, you know, these amazing costumes that you get to, to go into? What was that like for you? Were there any kind of standout moments on set for you? I think so much of the work was done for us with, with the production design, cinematography, the costume design. You know, it's so lavish and so textured that actually to just sort of slip into those clothes and slip into those mm -hmm. sets, you so much of the imaginative work about what it was like to exist in this dark and gritty world was done for you. I think that filming in the pub was probably one of my favorite, yeah. in the dolphin, Fantastic. where there's sort of all the characters congregate almost by accident, sort of, and we're there and it's a real melting pot of different classes and all walks of life kind of meet in this place and it felt like a real snapshot of what, what that inn might look like in 1851. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there is, there's a real, sense of that I, think I remember filming a scene where i'm walking down the street and i'm literally walking but as we're setting it up i can hear like the clomping of the horse hooves in the carriage and there's essays talking off to the side and i can see no cameras no lights just like candle lit streets i was like this is exactly yeah what somebody in 1850 would have seen there's no like modern thing there i might as well be a time traveler and <laughs> i love stuff like that it's really you just get a sense of it and, He's like, I'll work in period dramas for the rest of my yeah. career happily. Because they're, they're worlds in of themselves, you know. A sci-fi and fantasy is doing the same thing as a historical drama. is It's creating a world for you to disappear into. And that's what we do it for, right? Yeah. And, it's like... and the men's costumes are very comfy. <laughs> yes. Far comfier than the women's yeah, costumes, God, I yeah. think. I think I made that a point with, with Kathy, the costume designer. I was like, I don't want anything too restrictive. I think that <laughs> yeah. he's a very flowy character. Like, And then you realise it's December in Dublin and it's my yeah. three and you wish yeah. you'd asked for a big fur coat. <laughs> One more thermal, please. Yeah. How did you kind of prepare for that? I mean, there's so much, so many resources available at the time and it's very Jack the Ripper, you know, there's a lot mm -hmm. going on there. How did you kind of prepare to step into these roles? Yeah, personally, I... I Devoured the book. Um, mm. Elizabeth McNeil's writing is phenomenal. And it's, it's written in present tense, so it, it draws you in immediately. And there's so much nuance there with with each character that it, all the work is done for you. It's the first adaptation that I've done, I think, from a pure source material thing. And it's like a your job is done for you. You usually have to like find things in different... It's all there from his... You know, he touches his ear when he's nervous, or he does this thing, or the outside working in mm -hmm. um, was all there in that in that book. And so all the preparation was reading and highlighting and writing down and, and doing that for me. And I think that Charlie Miles, who wrote the screenplay, has really captured that essence of the book, the kind of really meticulously researched detail that is not staid and kind of difficult to read because it's so meticulous. She's breathed life into it, just like Elizabeth mm -hmm. did. And she kind of took these characters Put them in this world and then gave them life so actually just i mean the scripts were great that was how I, how i prepared there was loads to work with and that, what do you hope that viewers will take away from watching this paramount plus subscription <laughs> um <laughs> no i think they'll take away a i think i said it in the, in the previous interview that they're not going to forget the show it's not a show that you you will look at in a few years time and go, did we watch that i think it very much is its own vivid piece um and so they're going to take away memories <laughs> Yeah, I hope, I hope it's got a lot to say for itself. I think it's got a lot more, of, it's much more of a comment on today's society than a lot of other period dramas. So I think people will take different things from it, but I think it's it's got something to say for it. And I don't want to spoon feed people, but there's, there's, a, there's a message there. Can you there. spoon feed me? Just, <laughs> in a very literal sense. I'll let, oh gosh. <laughs> Please. Oh, thank you very much for speaking thank to you. me today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you.